When building your setup, the first thing you want to do is get your deck. And there's a lot of brands, different shapes, different sizes, and it can get pretty confusing. Well, I'm Spencer Nelsey, and I'm going to help you pick out your next deck. Today we're at Mishka LA, and uh, I'm going to go over some basics on some boards. Most uh, boards today are made out of uh, seven ply maple. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, I mean, you, you can count the plies. You might find boards in other weird materials like plastic, bamboo, or even fiberglass. I mean, it might last you a lot longer, but maple's where it's at. So until we find something better, well, let's stick to this. As you've noticed, skateboards come in tons of different graphics. I mean, it really doesn't matter. It's not going to make you a better skateboarder. But what does matter is the shape and the size. To determine the shape and size you need, you need to figure out what kind of board you're going to be building. A board for street or a board for some transition. So a skateboard can be measured in three different ways. Length, wheelbase, and the width. No matter what your weight and your size is, a good place to start is an 8 inch by 31 or 32. Anything smaller would be better for street and technical skating. I mean, don't get me wrong, people do ride bigger boards in street. I mean, like people do ride at eight and a half or whatever, but it's gonna be harder for technical tricks, like f doing flip tricks and whatnot. That's why you're gonna ride a smaller board, or at least you're gonna wanna try a smaller board. And if you're riding transition, you're gonna wanna get a bigger board. Something maybe like T-Man rides over here. It's gonna be wider than eight inches, and his wheelbase is actually an inch longer than most boards. And this is super good for transition skiing, because when you're flying through the air, you're gonna to wanna to have a bigger board to work with because it's definitely way more stable, and it's definitely gonna be a lot easier to grab in the air. When picking out a board, you should definitely pay attention to the nose and the tail, because they're not symmetrical. The nose is gonna be a little bit bigger, and the tail's gonna to be a little smaller. The nose is gonna have sometimes different shapes, it'll be pointy, it'll be boxy. The same goes for the tail, and it really comes down to your personal preference. The next thing we're going to talk about is the concave. Pretty much just the curve in your board. It looks like a little mini pipe or something. Some people think a steeper concave makes boards easier to flip. I don't know, I don't really think so. I know I've been saying a lot of this whole personal preference thing, so the best thing you can do is go to your local skate shop and go stand on a bunch of different boards and just feel it's right. Feel out the concave and uh, stand on the nose, I don't know, stand on the tail. I mean, this one feels pretty good. When you go to your local shop, you'll notice that shop decks are a lot cheaper than brand boards and pro model decks. There's no really difference in between the wood, but let me tell you this. If you want to see your favorite pro keep skating and your favorite company keep growing, show them some love and buy their board. Hopefully I filled you in on the basics of picking out your board. <laughs> and lastly, don't baby it. I mean, it is just a skateboard. I mean, throw it around a little bit, right? This is probably the worst place you could skate flat ground. The bottom of a vert ramp or a bowl.